Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I apologise for the hiatus there's been between videos. I'm afraid that I simply did not have the time to uh, put any videos out there over the last few months. Real world activity caught up with me somewhat. And it does take quite a bit of time to prepare, record, edit and upload these videos as I'm sure you can appreciate even though I'm not the best editor in the world. So I apologise for the delay between videos but hopefully over the next few weeks I'll have some time to put as many out as I can and I hope you enjoy them and I hope they enhance your enjoyment of the simulator. In the last video we were looking at the A320 and we were looking particularly at the normal procedures how to operate the aircraft in an ordinary flight so we were doing I think Bristol to Dubrovnik and we got up to the cruise. We will be carrying on uh, not that particular flight, but I will be showing you uh, the next phases in an ordinary flight in the Airbus, so looking at the descent preparation, the descent itself, and the approach and landing as well, right all the way through to shutting down and securing the aircraft. During that program, though, because it was quite a long flight, I seem to remember I was going to show you some of the major systems on the airplane and do a bit of a tour of the flight deck. Instead, however, I've decided to do this on the ground. So just like we did with the Q400, I'll be giving you a bit of a survey of some of the major systems on the A320, just so you're familiar with the aircraft and you know uh, what the indications are and uh, how the aircraft works. We'll start, first of all, I think, by looking at the hydraulic system, which is one of the more straightforward systems on the A320. The A320 has three hydraulic systems, colour-coded green, blue and yellow. Pressure can be transferred between certain of the systems but fluid cannot be and each system has its own independent reservoir. The green system first of all supplies power to some of the flight control systems as well as the normal braking system the nose wheel steering and the landing gear as well and it's powered by a pump driven by engine one. It's now common during operations particularly at big airports where there may be possible holding point delays or long taxi routes from the airport terminal to the holding point to taxi the airplane out single engine just as we would do in the Q400. Because engine one powers the green hydraulic system and therefore the parking brake and the nose wheel steering, engine one in this procedure, the single engine taxi out procedure, is started first and then engine two remains shut down. And this is to ensure that the engine driven pump is running to provide pressure to the green system and therefore the parking brake and the nose wheel steering. Engine 2 can then remain off following the pushback and the airplane can be taxied out on one engine until the aircraft gets close to the holding point at which point you could then start engine 2 and the second engine must then be started at least three minutes prior to takeoff. The master switch for the green hydraulic engine pump is located here on the hydraulic segment of the overhead panel. The yellow system feeds, among other things, flight control applications and also the alternate parking brake system. And it has both an engine driven pump fed by engine 2 and also a standalone electrical pump. The electrical pump is used particularly during single engine taxi operations to provide power to the yellow system while engine 2 is turned off and therefore the engine driven pump is deactivated and this is done to avoid using the PTU or power transfer unit 
which allows the transfer of hydraulic pressure between the yellow and green hydraulic systems. Although this system does work well, the manufacturer recommends that instead of relying upon it in ordinary single engine taxi operations, it is best to start the yellow electrical hydraulic pump to make sure that that system is pressurised rather than being pressurised via the PTU. The power transfer unit will activate automatically if there is a differential of more than 500 psi detected between the green and yellow systems. The nominal pressure for each system, green, blue and yellow, is 3000 psi. The master switch for the engine driven pump for the yellow system is located here and next to it the master switch for the electrical pump. We also have here the master switch for the power transfer unit which is always left in the automatic position in normal circumstances so that it will energize when there is a more than 500 psi differential between the yellow and green systems. It would only be deactivated in the event of a malfunction. The blue system powers some of the flight control applications and is not connected uh, via the PTU in the way that the yellow and green systems are. It is only powered by an electrical pump but in the event that the aircraft loses both engines and there's a complete hydraulic loss the aircraft is fitted with a nifty feature called a RAT or a ram air turbine which is now a normal feature on most modern generation jet aircraft and the ram air turbine is basically a, a turbine, a small propeller mechanism that free falls from the lower edge of the fuselage into the airflow so as to provide electrical power in the event of an entire AC electrical power loss and also hydraulics should both engines become inoperative. The master switch for the ram air turbine is located here so it can be manually selected on. The ram air turbine will automatically deploy if there is a complete AC power loss or both engines fail. It can however be manually selected on using this switch and you'll notice that the switch is guarded. The reason for this is to avoid inadvertent selection in flight because if the ram air turbine is extended in flight it can't then be retracted. This has to be done on the ground by an engineer. And you'll also notice that the electrical pump for the blue system is also guarded and again this is to ensure that there is no inadvertent deselection of the pump in flight. Each system has an accumulator to provide constant pressure during high demands and the green and yellow systems also have a fire shutoff valve represented by the circle here on the ECAM screen. and these shutoff valves will close upon the pushing of the fire push button for the respective engine and this will be a mandatory memory item in the event of an engine fire. At the top of the ECAM screen you'll notice the pressures for each system currently at zero because we're on the ground with the hydraulic systems completely depressurized and at the bottom you'll also notice the reservoir levels for each system. And that's it for the hydraulics, pretty straightforward.